He's probably one of the first DJs to sell a hard ticket. Yes. And just literally the experience. The experience was like facing the stage. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, a different thing from like, yo, Jason's playing, Boogie's playing, we're in the party. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and, right. and like we're looking at each other. People were focused on the booth. He was and one that's, of the first people that had that effect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll reload it. Je- Jeff London, DJ Jason Smith. Pick on the bang, bang. When the sun goes down, the music turns up. A whole new world opens up behind the velvet rope. Join us as we take you behind the scenes of the nightlife world. Are you ready? DJ Jason Smith, Jeff London. I'm the promoter, he's the DJ podcast, live from Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff London, one time, episode 29. 29. We got, we got a special episode today. Yo, big episode 29. My guy, Jeff London and Jason Smith. You know what it is. You can <laughs> find us at, I'm the promoter, he's the DJ on all formats. All formats. And today... Who we got, bro? Special, special, ex- extended interview with our guy. DJ Not only our guy, Reach. my brother DJ Reese, the one and only Mister DJ Reach. Let's go, my guy DJ Reach, checking in, man. I've been yeah. friends with this kid for a long time. We came up in this industry. Reach was doing it though, like when we were like coming up. Reach has always been doing it. He's a huge celebrity DJ. He's been around the world and back. He's a great influence on not only myself, but the culture in general. We have this beautiful thing called a, a secret society on our phones. It's a little chat that we have. We can't disclose the name of it. You know what I mean? But <laughs> it, 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 it's all love. And it's all love. And it's really, it's a great to have you here. Reach has been through it. He's, he's, worked at record labels he knows the culture he knows the history he knows so much about nightlife and and i'm just glad you could take out the time to be part of the show today man thanks yeah. homie. appreciate you man Yo, thank you guys man. thank you guys so much for having me honestly like you know i know I, I'm, I'm i'm sitting amongst veterans and and you know people who really who really like uh you know will ride for the culture and, yeah man and we really don't like, it's a job you know, but believe in this shit yeah you know this I mean? is a like, it's yeah, a like, culture for sure man hip-hop and, yeah, and, and like, nightlife everything it's just a broad range of beautiful things yeah. to put together dude so, so we, we all started off with like that 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 initial curiosity or that that fire burning inside us like yo what what's i, I want i want to be close to music i want to be yeah, close yeah, to, yeah. to to dj and like yo i want to do that we all started with that like just that that really pure kind of like curiosity and genuine interest like and bands we started in the garage career. man we started in our basements bro yep. playing crib, a hobby like, yeah, a hobby created a career for us a hobby Absolutely. yeah exactly that, you know that's I mean? my whole point is that like you know i think like you know we we all deserve our flowers or like to be to still be here today you know what i mean how many Especially, years do especially it, people like you know us I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we've been around man. yeah recess like people come and go a lot of different waves absolutely come and go and, you know? don't, yeah changes the, the 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 industry changes so quickly and to be able to adapt and grow and it is is a real hard thing to do and reach and i don't mean to toot my own horn but i i'm still here too you have to adapt yes. dude some people yes. don't don't know how to adapt mm-hmm. and they fall to the wayside but yeah. one thing a reach mm-hmm. didn't adapt to is i heard that he still uses scratch live when he <laughs> DJs. so other than that yeah <laughs> that's a fact oh yo they God. told me that at sapphires that on hard. sunday <laughs> I was like, they're lying. The sound guy came up. Shout out to James Wang and Richie Romero and yeah. Jonas. All those guys had me at Sapphires on Halloween with Nick Cannon. It was Hell crazy. Yeah. You were it missed. I was crazy. hoping to see you, man. But it was, was a crazy night. Slide through. Dude, it, is it, that it was, true? It was like insane. It was, I was insane, trying to dude. slide through and come show love, man. Like, yeah, man, I, I, I'm the dinosaur that I am in certain, in certain ways. I'm like, I try to think very like 
forward thinking, think ahead and, yeah, yeah. and, and you know, kind of like kick down some doors or whatever, figure out how to like lead. But when it comes to tech stuff, I'm like literally the dinosaur, the fossil. AM, literally, AM said to me, he was like, yo, Reach, I was coming to Vegas yeah, yeah. with crates. Is this when you were records. still at Tau? When, yeah, at Tau. I was flying out every week. He was at he was at um, Body English. Oh, Body English. Was Body English. Oh, what English. was yeah. that at? Hard Rock, was right? First, yeah. yeah. Hard Rock, yeah. So I think that was his first residency was Body English. That was his first big one. And he was there every Friday. And we were going, like, head to head. I was Fridays in Tau. He was Fridays in Body English. <laughs> and, like, you know, that was the homie already. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, we would build. And you know how he, you know, you guys, I'm sure, if you, you know, everybody knows how he was always really, like, pushing, you know, trying to push the culture forward, the DJ With everything, forward, right? Yeah, yeah. With everything, you know, whether it be like the style of mixing and cutting and wordplay and everything that mm -hmm. he's trying to do and mashups and, or even just tech wise. So our, our, what became one of our like, you know, really great mutual friends is always Rock the Con, Andy. Yeah. He's an amazing DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy, yep. legend. One of the, probably one of the most respected DJs like by other DJs, like everybody I know that knows Andy is like, yo, that kid is is, is a monster. He could he could you know he could have you know if he, anytime he wants he could yeah to the he, top, was, he can he was he amazing can, you know I mean? and he was he know, did it so effortlessly it. too like right so he I remember I used to see him at like where Kiss and Fly was this dude would be on his phone I'm like who the fuck is this guy texting like at two thirty in the morning he's right. texting the entire time he's mixing these records. Crazy, crazy, and, and bodying it. And yeah, like, yeah, body like it. You're sitting there, like scratching your head, like damn. And you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but AM, AM took him under his wing. Like AM, when he met Andy, yeah, he took Andy under his wing, and he took a liking to him. Was like, yo, man, like you're super dope. Like your edits, your programming, like you know, you oh, got yeah, all the all, yeah. all the tools in the tool belt. Like he was like, yo, I, I want to bring you, I'm going to start an agency. I want to bring you over to my agency. Yeah. They were homies at first. And then he was like, I want to bring you over to my agency. Um, Andy was already with scam artists. And That's the way right. he got yep. scam artists was I was getting booked in, uh, I was, I was resident at, at, at Marquee in New York. And then I started getting these gigs. I think before Vegas, I started getting these gigs in Arizona and Scottsdale. Cause I had a bunch of boys from like, high school from yeah, New yeah. York that went out to ASU. So I just go see them like, yo, your campus is fucking Lit. crazy. That's like, where I met fashion when I was 14 years old at teen night at, <laughs> at ASU campus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was when the first, first time I met fashion. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? They're like, yo, this kid is nasty. I was like, who the hell is this guy? And then I heard him. I was like, yo, he's insane. He came out um, with like Z trip. They came up together. Yeah. Z trip. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that whole, like, that's such an interesting little kind of phenomenon in, in and of itself. Like, just, you know, because knowing that it's not a major market, but seeing how much time Dudley was not it, a major market. I mean? Yeah, for sure. Nah, it was just like really a, a big college town. Huge. But like, yeah. what came out of there was like, you know, some super dope legendary DJs. And so I, I, I kept getting booked out there. My boys were like, yo, do this frat party. Do this little lounge. We're, we're promoters. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. so I'm like, yeah, because truthfully... Their, their school was way more fun than my school. I went to school in Connecticut. I went to uh, Wesleyan College in in, uh, in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I was like kind of close to Boston. The Cardinals, so the Cardinals of Wesleyan, isn't it? The Cardinals, <laughs> that's us. Yeah. Bill, ba Bill, ba Bill Belichick went to Wesleyan. Yeah, that's crazy. Bill Belichick, his daughter, like, you know, a couple little Wesleyan, Lynn Manuel, Miranda from, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Broadway uh, shit. That's the homie and everything. So, so I'm at the school and it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's dope. It's dope. It's, it's, it's like, you know, hippied out and we're like good vibes, but it's not the like, it's like, it's, it's like the no energy versus the big room. Right? Yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We totally. were the lounge yeah. and ASU was like the fucking the big room, the fucking yeah, monster yeah. rave. You know That's what I mean? crazy. So I went out there, got a taste of that. And I was like, first of all, let me say as a footnote, ASU at that time, I don't know if it's still true. Because I don't even know if Playboy exists anymore. I remember that. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the number one school, <laughs> school for like, for, yeah. That, like that was like girls who would end up in Playboy. Yeah. Where come from. It was like, like it was like the farming system. Like, I lived out I there. Out yeah. There, it was crazy. And I was like, yo, I don't even want to go back home. Like I didn't want to leave. I was like, yo, I don't want to go back. I want to stay here. 
Like your school is way better than my school. So I'm, I'm playing out there every time I get the chance. Right. So I'm playing, I'm playing. And then I, I you know, they're like, yo, uh, LA, LA kind of picked me up. So some LA clubs started picking me up and they were like, yo, we want you to do this state and that date. And then Vegas, Tal Vegas came. That's how so you got Vegas, now, Tal? So, so, from that. So, yeah, so, so, mm-hmm. so, well, no, not even from that. No, nah, it was just me being like the sort of, you know, it, it was between, it became between me and Vice, but initially it was me as the flagship DJ of the, what then was just called Strategic Group. Now it's called Tal Group. So I was the flagship DJ at Marquee every Tuesday and Thursday, which were the hottest two nights. Those were the two big industry nights. So um, from that, when they said, yo, we're, we're opening up in Vegas. So yeah, like we got a spot for you. Like, yeah, like, like you want to be part of our next chapter right. of our business. And I was like, yeah, of course, like sign me up. I don't care. Like the money was at first, the money was, was, was nothing. It was, it was local rates to, you know, to go all the way there. So my schedule didn't allow me to go to, uh, AZ anymore to Scottsdale yeah. and my guys were like yo like come on man you're leaving us hanging like who, who are we gonna use the DJ like who's our special guest New York DJ and I was like yo this is kid who plays on Wednesday nights um, he does like you know everything he has you know he can play any style you want right now he's playing with this kid Steve Aoki and um, who's getting like you know booed on for playing like the hip hop sets that he's playing and the and the music that he's playing like the crowd's kind of giving this kid a hard time. Yeah, he was playing and, open and, format and, 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 at that time for sure. Open hard format. open format. So I heard him play like open format and getting yeah. like shit on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Not the Aoki that we know today. Obviously, he found his way to greatness. He no found question. his own lane. He's a yeah. dope, awesome guy, you know, and a marketing genius. Totally. Now, I love, I love what he does marketing wise and you know musically as well. So Andy's like making friends with, with Aoki. They're on like Wednesday nights was kind of like the. I think it was Wednesdays and Fridays that they played. And those nights, Friday was house in the main room downstairs. Wednesday, I think, was like uh, open format, but leaning towards like, I want to say like leaning towards a little more like indie shit, a little more like that, that LA, like, like, like all, yeah, like that electro, yeah. like that, uh, that super LA, started, like ultra yeah, dance, like started, alternative dance shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. So that, I still was, play all that stuff. Yeah, so that, that was like really the, like, like just birth of electro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they were, they were on that night. And, um, so, so I'm like, yo, there's this kid, you know, I, I, when I, when I can get in, cause the crazy shit was was at the door. Legendary doorman Was. Was the best. Shout out Was. Like, <laughs> He's the shout fucking out to best Was. man. Yeah. The jack of all trades. Love actor. that dude, man. He's and, always treated me so well. Connoisseur, yeah. Yeah. all that shit. Guitar he, player. And, He's oh, a man, I, rock star, yeah. movie star. Rock this guy star, does it all, man. man. Yo, I got I got some Was stories, man. People don't realize like Was used to be a bodybuilder at one point. Was was a bouncer. Was was a bouncer <laughs> I can see that, bro. And a bodybuilder like a like a juice head, like you know what I mean? Like no dis- like comp- like competition like, dude. Yo, he was like, yo, like the dude was jacked. Jacked. Like he he rolled with like rough ass dudes. Like like his man, his right hand man is a legendary dude who I think bodyguarded Madonna named Lucifer. That's I got crazy. yo, I got I got stories. If you got time, I got stories. <laughs> I know you so, did. That's why I had to have yo, you on here. But yeah, yeah, not yeah. only that, we uh, we saw that article about disco. You sent me that another yeah. famous yo, door guy. Crazy. Yeah. So if, for, for y'all that don't know, yo, Wash was like a really, really legendary door guy in New York City. And he was, yeah. he, he's was he been part of this industry and culture for a very long time and is very well respected for sure. I, I was trying to push him to, to do a podcast before... COVID, I was like, yo, you have to do a podcast. <laughs> the shit that he's too got. Many relationships, yeah, yeah. Too many stories. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, he, he, I mean, like, one day he'll write the book. Like, you know what I mean? Or oh, my God, it's going to be so good. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Gotta have I'll, yeah. I'll buy it for sure. Hell yeah, man. Um, so I'm going on Wednesdays. I'm I'm feeling myself Tuesday, Thursday. I'm, I'm the guy. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. I, I stumbled into this gig. And I'm like, yo, I go back on a Wednesday to, like, check out other DJs. So I'm like, yo, I'm off on Wednesdays. Let me hear the other DJs. Ross is like... I'm like, hey man, um, you know, I'm the guy from Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, um, you know, I DJ with you, and he's like, it's Wednesday, so what does that mean? <laughs> like, he just did it at the door, yeah. like the first like ten weeks in a row, but That's I'm so relentless. So I just kept coming back and coming back. I'm like, damn, my maybe my girls aren't hard enough. I, I had to switch up my girls. I'm like, I gotta, <laughs> yeah, 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 I gotta, yeah. I got to step my game up. I had to import some girls from from ASU or something like that. So I'm like, all right. So I come back, he finally lets me in. I meet this kid, Andy. 
Andy's dope. I'm like, yo, this kid is fucking wicked, man. This kid's nasty on it. So we start talking. I think like, you know, he like drove me home with all my crates one day. He like, he's like, yo, I, I feel like he came from what city was he originally from? I can't Virginia, like, I think, right? Vir- yeah, I think Virginia. Yeah, I think yeah, Virginia, yeah. right? So so he had a car. So he was like, yo, you ever do with the car? And, yo, <laughs> yeah, New Yorkers so, ain't got no yo, cars, can yo. I, can I catch a ride with you? And yeah. He's like, yo, I got you, man. He's mad cool. So back to AZ, they're like, who do we get? I said, yo, you should get this kid. He's fucking nice. And he's like, not getting the light he deserves. Let, like, let's get him this traveling gig and give, give him that platform. So I was like, cool. They were like, my friends are like, yo, this kid better be good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they, we booked him and they were like, you're cool, Reach, but this guy's, like, yo, this guy's dead. But they had an like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> they fell in love with him. So they start, and I'm like, you know me, I'm like, yo, blessings, like, right. Yeah, you are, so you they, love, they, they it's love. love. They, yeah, they, yeah. They start flying him out every, every, every chance they got, That's they start amazing. flying him out. While he's out there, he gets on the radar of if, if I'm not mistaken, he gets on the radar of Vice. Yeah. Vice hears about him, and Vice is like, "Yo, I checked this kid out. He's ill." And Vice always at that time was running around with his manager Suji. Yeah. As they're trying to build scam an agency yeah, scam yeah. artist. Yeah. The Indian. So they got like, <laughs> yeah. So they got like uh, Eric Deluxe. I think was down maybe at this point. Uh, five and five Eric Deluxe. Vice, all of Vice's homies, Echo, yeah. um, Homicide, like it was like Homicide, yeah, yeah he's like, one of the first too. Homicide, Homicide. Yeah. With Wait, wasn't Homicide was like, with the AMs? Like no. Hey, Homicide and AM were, were no, he best was friends oh, before he was on AM's Very agency, Dexstar. Dexstar before skin. Before, he was, was on Dexstar before Hollywood was on Dexstar before Homicide. Homicide was on Dexstar before Scam. I think maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I'm not sure if that's true. I might, I, I, he might have been. He might have been. He might have been. You might be right about that. Cause I think Dexstar um, was. I think it was. I think it was Mood tight. Swing, yeah, Dexstar, yeah. and then scam. scam. So I think Mood Swing was the first. Then came Dexstar, yes. and then came uh, Scam. That's well, the way I well, think Sujit it went. Had scam. Sujit had Scam uh, uh, like shortly after I think Mood Swing because he was working with Bad Boy Bill doing Rage. Oh, that's so that was the first <laughs> that's right, dude. Gig. It, so he it, was early. In yeah. full he circle, early. Bad Boy Bill is now on Scam. <laughs> Now it's scam. Yeah, yeah. We'll That's crazy. Yeah. So, so Vice hears this kid rock the con and it's like, yo, Suja, we got to sign this kid. He's dope. So Andy signed. He's like, they court him. Like, yo, we want to get you down. Yeah. And, and we'll, you know, we'll get you some LA shit. We'll get you this. We'll get you that. So he gets down and he tells me, yo, Reese, you got to fuck with these guys. Like, yo, these guys are building something dope. Right. I'm like, who's Vice? What? Who? Su- what? What? What are you talking about? So I'm like in my own world, but I'm like, all right. Then I start seeing AM come to New York, and half the time when he was coming to New York to play, yeah. he's bringing Vice with him. So uh, I'm like, oh, okay, that's the same kid Andy was talking about, right, yeah. Vice. All right. So I was like, let me check him out. So I think like Vice would close sometimes for for, for uh, AM, and also when AM would be double booked, yeah. and he couldn't do two, he'd be like, yo, he'd throw those gigs to Vice. So Got that it. really, really was a huge, huge, uh, you know, like, like step up, like a huge, like right. blessing for Vice. Yeah, because AM was like, yo, you're my. And, and then the fact that there's what ended up happening over time was that Vice's style was a little more traditional, you know, straightforward. Groom that radio, Power One Hundred Six. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. The, he's just he's hitting you with the with the bangers. Right. Not he he could do all the creative shit that Vice that that AM could do, but he wasn't. He wasn't leaning as heavy on it. Right. So what ended up happening is when AM really was in that bag of yeah, like, yeah. yo, live mashups, mad cuts, like, <laughs> pardon me, I don't have COVID. But, <laughs> so, so when he was really in that bag of like, I'm going to put on a concert, yeah. this is what I feel like happened to, to AM. At a certain point, and this is early, this is pre-EDM explosion, People would come see AM. He was the first DJ and certainly the first open format DJ other than maybe, let's say, like a, a Jazzy Jeff or somebody, you know, another legend like that. Yeah. But, like, you would literally, people, when his name was out there enough, people would just come and, like, stare at the booth. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Concert, like a, right. No, like you a would, band is playing. Yeah, like, like you not, could sell hard tickets. Anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd sell hard. He's probably one of the first DJs to sell a hard ticket. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. And just literally the experience. The experience was like like this, like facing the stage, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, like a different thing from like, yo, Jason's playing, Boogie's playing, we're in the party. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and, right. and like we're looking at each other. People were focused on the booth. He was and one of the first people that had that effect. Now, sorry, I think, I think that's the time when the DJ booth started going from being up in the, uh, Oh, we lost reach. Oh, oh, he's, no, you back. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I, call <laughs> I think that's the time it. when the DJ booth started transforming from being in the back of the club in the closet or yep. way above in the crow's nest to actually be in the front of attention. Yeah. And it's because AM 100%. allowed that. He broke that barrier of us just being thrown in a shitty room to actually right, be in the, the right, center right. of attention. <laughs> and so, Afterthought, like, where can we, how small of a space can we squeeze the DJ this room? Guy, yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? like, yeah, for sure. Which, which, which truthfully, which truthfully was the effect of bottle service. Right. Because previously, like, if, yeah. you, if, you, if you think about a Studio 54 or a Tunnel or Palladium or any of those, like, legendary clubs, it was all about the DJ in right. the eighties and seventies. It was, and, yeah, you know, yeah. 90s. All, so, so that, that's so that's that's. I mean, we can talk about that too. Like, that's an interesting thing where, like, the economics and the mm-hmm. business side, and how we all know how it's like, you know, affected our our experience as DJs, and like, just like the, um, you know, like how people experience like, like. So, I, of if course, I'm not yeah. mistaken, yeah. So, if I'm not mistaken, like, bottle service came from. Uh, some New York like OG promoters that went to Europe, like you know, like so, like socialite guys. I like, heard this like story my, too. Yeah, I actually heard yeah. this story somewhere too. Yeah, I can't so, like, I can't I tell you like, where uh, I heard it from because I can't David remember. David Sonner, yeah. Michael Alt, like those yeah. guys, like guys in that era, they went to Europe, partied in Europe, living the high life, yeah. and they're like, oh shit, they're selling champagne at a table in order for you to sit down, and like instead of focusing on a big dance floor, somebody got the idea to like. We can make we can upsell and make way more profit if we like right. if we squeeze the dance floor and make it more tables. So the business people, the business side of the of, you know of, of 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 the game, they picked that up and came back and were like, "Yo, we're doing that. Like, let's try that out." So once that happened, it's the real estate becomes like square footage real estate in the club. Yeah, you know, matters. Becomes like uh, matters. Yeah, like I, I, that. Those like you know those five tiles right there. I could sell those five tiles. With, Square tiles, yeah. I can sell that spot for two thousand dollars. Right, right. You know, so do I want to? Don't want the DJ to be this big. No, or do I want to make yeah, right, small right. as fuck. Twenty grand, for especially in New York. So there's not a lot of big space to to do yeah. shit like that either. So, yeah. so did so did the AM yeah. uh, bust on you for still using the scratch lock? Hundred percent. I mean, not using Serato. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yo, so so AM would come to me and he would be like, "Yo, I love you, Reach, but like." Come to my crib. I will literally, I will give you the music. I will give you the software. Like you have to get on Serato, bro. Like you're missing out on this whole new tech. Yeah, that's yeah. like game changer. And I'm like, yo, like, the, yo, I'm like the, this kind of stubborn. Like, yo, it's working for me, man. Like, I don't know if I want to switch. And like, I don't want to fuck up the magic. Like, that's how I felt. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, of course, I, everything's clicking. Like these. These vinyls are like my babies right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we all we all had that feeling, yep. to, you know, to some extent. A lot. So I was like, yo, I, and plus I'm like, I'm waiting to see when you guys' computers crash. You know, what I mean? of like, course, yeah, I, yeah. Like, like, like I don't do that. I do the same thing. I wait for the second generation of something to come out. Second generation. To before I so get AM into literally it. Was like, yo, he, he was like, yo, dude, please, like, it will help you. Like, you 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 have talent. Like, yo, uh, this will up your game. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And I just kept putting it off. It literally got to the point where now five five is on is on uh, Serato. Yeah. Now Ob One is on. Ob One, uh, yes. Ob One, <laughs> yo, shout yeah. out to the homie Ob One. Yeah. Um, um, you know, uh, uh, Eric Deluxe, obviously, uh, yeah. Scratchy, all all the homies, Homicide, all the homies, Rock yeah. the Cup. So now I'm like the only guy coming to Tao with these records, and I'm charging them. I'm like, yo, at a certain point, I'm like, yo, guys, like. My baggage fees are oh, like three hundred dollars yeah, yeah, yeah. every yeah, time. Yeah. Like that's crushing my whole five hundred dollar check that you're paying me yeah. to come out to Vegas yeah. when I first started. Yeah, of course. So you know, before they added a couple zeros to that, so yeah. I'm like, yo, so I'm like, so 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 they're getting pissed because they're like, yo, your baggage fees are crazy. These guys are walking in with a laptop and a backpack. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I literally, I ended up buying extra crates 
So I, I duplicated all my crates and I would leave them in, in Vegas? a storage oh, in no Vegas shit. at town. The, the, the legend is that they're still there. Wow. Because I left them. I left them after my contract. Oh, my ended, God. I, I left them. That's crazy. Because I was like, yo, I'm not really. And, and at that point, I was already on Serato. So right. I was like, uh, uh, you know, let's go look for like, them. Yeah. So yeah should we go on an adventure? It's like a treasure. It's like <laughs> yeah. a treasure fucking hunt. Yo, like, it's how. that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that'd be, know who has them? Like, that dude, Omar. He was so mean to me at Tao. You remember yo. that dude, Omar? He was, he, Shout out to Omar. <laughs> I mean, go ahead. You talk. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. So <laughs> he doesn't get any of my attention. So, so Reach, we do that. We do this on the. It was on, a love hate with me and Omar. I <laughs> bet. I can only hate. imagine. I have love and respect for him because he was initially at, at the core. He's a house DJ. Yeah. So he was a DJ. He understood. Um. And but like, you know, Tao is so successful because they're so serious and militant about like business and and you know just kind of like you know how they run a very tight ship and like there's a lot of discipline that's needed to work with them yeah. on the managerial side for so sure they, like they're very like you know as what they're, they're they're loving and caring and, and like you know nurturing to their staff and the family but they're also like yo the expectations are high and like you know you only you don't have a lot of room to, to fuck right, up. right so they so they were riding him like like jason strauss specifically was riding omar no wonder that was like his, now i understand his, his, what, like, right, where he's coming jason from then. Yeah, literally yeah. groomed this guy yeah, yeah yeah and like made him into like yo you're gonna be like me you're gonna be a fucking militant fucking, he was he was you know, very militant execution where, guy. Like, where, where really is he execute. now i don't know huh. i on it I mean, I, I I think it got to be a lot. Yeah. In, in, in the end, he started to develop his own agency. Oh, okay. I, I, I had I had like you know in the end of my contract, shit kind of unraveled for me. Tequila, girls, weekly flights, not a lot of sleep. Yeah, yeah and, like, and you were young. Just it's just a different young, time, space, twenty something. Yeah, yeah. Feeling myself and all that. So like, my shit kind of just unraveled a bit. <laughs> and they were like, "Yo, we love you, Reach." You got to take some time off. And Omar was one of the main people who was like, yo, like, because I had a certain amount of leverage from being like the first guy. I were, that they were like, your flagship. You right. Know no, I mean? yo, you were. That's what I remember. You were at that same time, kind of. That's when we first started at Providence. And, and for you yes. to have that huge contract, Providence, which was a nightclub in Atlantic City where Reach and I yes. first used to play with each other. Yes. Yeah, that was big because that was that era of the Paris Hiltons, the yeah, that, AMs. That sounded reach... a little crazy. We used to play with each other. No, I'm <laughs> pause. <laughs> I'm like, pause, pause. I'm like, I'm but like, I have a story about that. It's pretty funny. DJ June. Let's yeah, look, June. Look. Is the, she's she's the best. Oh, my God. I got to get June on here, too. But, like, Yo, Reach June, was, definitely. like, one of the first big guys to be playing, like, Vegas like that. In mm -hmm. in that that's yeah. what broke his career into like taking all these other ventures around the world, man. You know, that, that Tao, Tao in, that was a big, that was, that was when Vegas was popping too, man. So Yo, it was crazy. like celebrities everywhere and it's not the same anymore, but so that was a yeah, good era insane. for you. So reach Yo, it was, it was amazing, man, for sure. It was amazing. And, and it was like, it was, it was right before, you know, literally I remember, AM got a million dollar contract. He's making twenty yep. k. Was that at Body English? Friday. Was that, that the was Body like English LAX. contract, or was it? That LAX. was the Body English. Oh uh, no, that was, was the Body English. English. No, he opened oh, no, LAX and, later and, on. Yeah, LA, yeah, and, and LAX made him a partner. Yeah, LAX made him a partner. Um, and so they gave him equity, and he had the million dollar contract. Right. And then later on, his last contract, I think, was was Palms. Was Definitely Palms? Yeah. Palms because a they had the trip took over with his face on yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So this guy was literally like rock starring it out, yeah. Yeah. like breaking down doors for DJs and especially open format DJs. He was man, and then and then this whirlwind comes in called EDM. And it's not and even, let's rectify, it's not, it's EDM, it's not house music. EDM is right. totally EDM. separate from yeah. house music. House Absolutely. music ain't going nowhere. EDM's a right. niche, for sure. Right, and so when that came in, we were all thinking like AM, Vice, Reach, uh, you know, a homicide, a, 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 a Irie when he would come to town, certain people. It was like, yo, we were we were the top of the food chain. Yeah, you know, yeah. In, in our in, in our perspective from open format wise, we were the top of the food chain. Z Trip obviously was 
he was going another route because he was like he's always in a he's always in his he's always in his own lane yeah he was yeah yeah, making records and and then and then the edm guys came in and they just like we 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 didn't become an afterthought to the owners and the staff and our pool of 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 fans yeah but like to like the larger, like like to the like masses, the larger yeah. audience, the masses. Yeah. Yeah. Who the fuck were we? Right, because people are coming through with their own original songs. And not only that, they were selling hard tickets. Yeah. They're selling tickets because they're actually touring the bands. Yeah, they're, yeah. So they they just eclipsed us. So the twenty grand that AM was making was like quick, like. It was like a two three year sweet spot. Like yeah, this is it with the oh King. for all of us though like, too. I remember we were doing oh, like five thousand gig. Yeah, it went from and like you guys are getting a hundred, right? And then I mean, uh, first it, yeah, but, the yeah. middle money just disappeared. We were uh, we were uh, like yes. close to me. I you know I wasn't making twenty k, but we're up to that five right. grand pocket. Sure. And then all of a sudden sure. EDM came out. It came into that's when you're exactly right. Came in. We're spending sixty thousand dollars on an artist. On we're spending three hundred and fifty dollars when we don't have that artist. Right. And it, that middle yeah, money just no totally middle disappeared. Down, yeah. yeah. And, and listen, and that, and that's, and that is where a lot of DJs you know, fell off too. Yeah, because they couldn't you know, survive that money. Moving to yeah, Vegas, like yeah. think about how that dude, multiple dudes we know, Crooked, up Sean Perry, Sean Perry, uh, Crooked, Crooked, shout out uh, Crooked, yep, uh, uh, Never, uh, you know, mad dudes we know were picking up. Uh, even uh, the young homie, um, um, uh, I don't remember his name in a second, but like. Like we're 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 picking up and moving out there. Like yo, I'm moving my life to Vegas because yep. this is where the opportunities are. This is where the big money is. Even if I start at the bottom of the totem pole, I'm gonna work my way up, and it's gonna it's yep. gonna pay dividends. Right, it's gonna right. be worth it. You know, I'm, people bringing their families and wives and kids and shit. So yeah. you know, and then to have that, like you said, to have that middle section of the budget like spectrum Just disappear, evaporated. It was like yo, and, and the thing is, it ended up, it ended up, it ended up. Like being so top heavy with Calvin Harris making two fifty a night, <sighs> the yeah. chain smokers, the homies who yeah. were making three hundred dollars yeah. in New York, yeah. three hundred bucks to split between the two, two of them. them. Yeah, the, and shout out to the original Rhett. founding member. Shout out to Red and group. Alex. Yeah, Red, Red and Alex. Yep, yep. Named Rhett. the group, brought out, brought Alex Paul uh, in as a part as as. He he was in the art world. Yeah, he brought. Alex That's what he did. He sold homie. artwork. Yeah, yeah. His homie was like, "Yo, I love when you spin. I love coming to see you spin. Yo, can you teach me how to DJ? Let's maybe we could be a group." And Rhett was like, "Yeah, we could be a group. You're the homie, of course. Yeah, I'll yeah. show you how to spin." <laughs> Bad laid back. Shout out to Rhett Bixler. Names the group. We're yep. gonna be the Chain Smokers. Yep. And and I let I let you have him on the show to tell his own story. That. <laughs> oh, that's a good but, one. It's like the loss. Right. It's like the drummer that left the Beatles before yeah. the Beatles blew up. Yes, <laughs> yes, yo. And Chainsmokers at the top of the spectrum were getting in a few years ago four hundred thousand yep. dollars wow, a night. That's yeah, crazy. man. So there's there's scandal in this too. There's there's controversy in this because you know the articles that came out in 2019, I think, where you know, it was found out that there were deals being made. There were bidding wars going on between when and oh yeah, this Paul is pre-COVID and, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-COVID, yeah, pre-COVID, yeah. there were bidding wars going on where they were the the they were essentially. I'll just say like the managers of the art, and I don't want to. I'm not targeting anybody or anything like that. Yeah. But they were running up the numbers. They were like, yo. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two hundred grand, <laughs> yeah. two fifty, three hundred, but. There was people I think that might have had a vested interest in that run up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Of course. Yo, I'm gonna say two fifty next, and you say three, and then like the higher the number went, I think somebody was getting a little kickback. Right, of course. Right, right. The but well, that was a that's, huge that's, excess that's, thing. I think that's where the, a lot of the DJs ended up going. I think excess at Encore was yep. was was definitely yep. definitely like pulling the muscle and spending the money. And uh, yep. now they don't have anything lined up over there, from what I'm right. seeing. Right. From what I'm seeing, it's like a, it's, a, it's a different story, and that's the thing. And so, and and then even the EDM guys. So it got so top heavy that now you've got. I remember it would literally be like me and Vice and a bunch of the homies and uh, five Eric Deluxe, et cetera, et cetera. We're all in town, and it's like 
we're all like scratching our heads as open format DJs like, yo, this EDM shit is here. These guys are getting all the love. We got like one little billboard. They got like 10 billboards around right, town. Yeah. They're getting fucking room key. They're getting all the, they got all the, in the magazines. The branding everything. around that, yeah, it was crazy. The so branding and marketing around them is crazy. And we're like, all right, we got we to gotta learn to DJ EDM. So we're all like, all right, we're going to learn to DJ EDM. We're going to try to learn to produce EDM. And, yep, um, yep. you know, because because think about it. Nobody could tell, like we said at the beginning of the conversation, this dream for all of us, little hobby, pipe dream, solidified into a career and a lifestyle. A business, so you couldn't too. Tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, no. We, 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 we were all winning. At yeah. whatever level <laughs> you were at, if you were working and making a living, you know, every week by DJ, you you made it happen. You were living the dream. So you couldn't tell us that we couldn't learn how to make EDM. You couldn't tell us no, no, that we not. weren't going to go and come for those guys next. Calvin Harris, <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yeah. Dead Mouse. We were going to come for their throats. Is that we when you, is that the era when you guys made that sick ass scam video? Oh, that yes. shit was fire! Oh, no, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing, you know, when yeah. you guys were like on top of the parking garage and yeah, shit like yeah. that, we were doing the Ocean's <laughs> Eleven. Like, yeah, that. yeah, that shit was fire. I think Irie was that in there. Shit. Everybody, Irie you were in was, there. I, I, we were sitting there like, yo, you think we need one more? Yo, I think we need one more. Like a Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah, that shit Cruz. was so yo, fire, dude. One guy. Ocean, like, it's like Ocean's Ten. We needed number yeah, eleven. Yeah. And then Irie was the, the the X Factor. He was number eleven. I think Scribble was, was in like, that video too. Wasn't Scribble, Scribble in that video? He was like Scribble there for like two that. weeks. He was like on scam for like two weeks, right? And that yeah, thing he had was, just joined. Just joined. Yeah, yeah. I he had just yo. I I got I got crazy stories. I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to get myself in any trouble. I don't want to burn any bridges. And nothing, 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 nothing bad about. No, no, I, no, 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 no. That's my brother. That's my brother, and God bless him. My too. I you owe know, my whole my career brother. to that guy. Uh, yeah, too. for I'm like, sure. Yo, listen, actually, we all. If you want to go on, like the timeline, the timeline of like the history of open format DJs and who the like, literally, truthfully, who the Mount Rushmore. Oh, it's definitely the, scribble. Yeah, we, that, 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 that's a conversation yeah. right there. Who's about Mount Rushmore? Yeah. But also, like, he gets overlooked, but I think he's got to be on that Mount Rushmore because he broke through the biggest barriers. There would be no AM Israel. without him. He was the first. AM's on there, no question. He's, but he's, there would have been no AM if it wasn't for Scribble because Scribble was the exactly. first DJ yeah. to be brought to the forefront of pop, not right. even pop culture. MTV, yeah. MTV. he was the right. first DJ you saw yeah. on television. Right. This man yeah. had That's fucking it. toys selling in Toys R Us. Yeah. Bobbleheads. Scribbleheads. They were called, what, yeah, bobbleheads are the, uh, the original. Yeah. Yo, this is the original rock star. He's chilling yeah. with Dave Navarro. Then he's chilling with Run DMC, right. and he's, he's he's hanging out with Carmen Electra, and he's living it. And he's, he's playing house with, uh, music Molly on some Crew. nights too. Yeah, yeah, everything. And, Tommy and, Lee, and, and, and then and then he's on Hot ninety seven playing Mob Deep, and I'm listening. I'm like, Yo, Queens, get the money, quick, quick, Queens, and I'm sitting in my crib like, Oh my God, this guy, yo, he's killing it. Yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. he, this guy, all flowers, and you should have him on the show. I'm just gonna yeah, go we gotta have him on the show. DJ Scribble and. He's been to hell and back three, four times. Yeah. So his story is is like you know, God bless him. He's he's his heart is gold. Of he, course, he's the best is, man. Is, I'm it, so it grateful. Needs to be told, yo, like that guy made it. Yeah, like you said, no AM without Scribble. Scribble broke the fucking doors down before everybody. So, um, yeah, he had just joined when that video dropped. Um, and like, yo, man, we were on such a high, and then the the, the fucking it was like Fifty Cent coming to the to the industry or hip hop. Like EDM came in and just like yep. and fucking bullied all of us. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. hey, fuck you guys. We're they still trying to recover from that shit. We're still trying to get like we're, you know we're like you know what I'm saying. Uh, Facts, shout out to man. my man Ja Rule. I don't want to say I don't even doubt Ja Rule. That's all. <laughs> but like you know what I'm saying, like we're we're still figuring it out right now. Yeah, man. Um, but like it got so top heavy that now it would be like I was saying it would be like. Vice and uh, and you know Eric and Homicide or whatever, and we're like, who do we want to go here to do our research today at the pools on Saturday or Sunday? And it's like Aoki's over here at one pool, Calvin Harris at another pool, Tiesto's playing a, a, a the like sunset set. Like it was literally like a festival of lineup 
every every single weekend. weekend. Yeah, crazy too much. So you didn't even know, like, who were you gonna go listen to? Right, right. And the economics of it were so crazy that if you landed and you just came from Texas and you know and from New York and L.A. and Boston, wherever you came into town, who the fuck are you gonna go see? Right, right. There's too many options, so they couldn't. They literally it got to the point where they started bankrupting themselves yeah. because. You're paying every guy. Tiesto's going to get 150 for the pool, yeah. and then he's going to get 200 for the nighttime set at the club. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't sustain that. Guys right? walking out with bodies. like a half a mil on oh, a weekend, crazy, bro. Crazy. Yeah, dude. And, and there weren't enough bodies to fill to all that space. No. Fill every room. Bro. So it started to bankrupt itself. And then they went back and they were like, yo, this shit's got to end. I feel like, like, La Cosa Nostra. Like, I think they all the came Boston. together and they were like, yeah. that's why Excess yeah. is like, I'm paying nobody shit. Yeah. But Resort right. World wasn't at that meeting because that's where all that money is being spent right now. Resort World spent a lot of money. And and, and, and what happened to the EDM Zook guys also something. is they got a clips. Okay, yeah, these guys sell hard tickets, but Cardi B has 100 million followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So who are you going to book? Right. Am I going to spend. I, and now I'm, I'm I'm at the pricing where Cardi B will take my four hundred thousand. Yeah, it's almost yes, same price. Yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, she will. Travis Scott, you know, shout out to the homie Travis. He's going through some shit right yeah, now. Yeah, man. Travis Scott will take my four hundred thousand. Right. Fuck yep. Yeah. So who you gonna book? You know what I mean? Like you gonna have a residency for Travis, Khaled, uh, Snoop, uh, Cardi. Uh, you know the the all stars of, of you know whoever the all stars of music in general are. You gonna have a fucking you can have them on the lineup. Oh, yeah. As much as we love the EDM guys, they ain't bigger than those guys. You know what True. I'm saying? Very Mar- fast. Marshmallow's yeah, yeah. big, but like, you know, is it going to be Cardi or, you know, Bieber or... Well, I'm telling you right now, I'm not I'm not going to be driving around listening to a Marshmallow make, uh, album, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yo, how about like this past Halloween experience? How like every Halloween store I went into... The marshmallow, oh, like yeah. one of the oh my god, classics. that's crazy but, like, for kids. That's kids so were eating that shit up. Classics. Like you know, like like he's one of us at the at the root somewhere. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So, Dot so com was his first lesson, name, like, I think. You know, right? Right? Yeah. And, and truthfully, truthfully, before him, if we're keeping it real. Paulie D costume was the first one. So well, oh my god, I didn't even see a Paulie D what, costume. Well, what about Dead Paulie D? A Dead Mouse costume. Right. Like Paulie D costume is like in the back now. Like, I gotta the Google this shit. No, de- no disrespect to Paulie D. De- I love Dead Paulie. Mouse had the costume too. The Dead Mouse had. Dead yeah, Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. For so sure. so reach on sure. uh, on all of our yeah. interviews. We we get, we got to finish up with. A little yes, my word. Bad. I could talk for three what? days. I would love that. Yeah, a little word <laughs> association. So I'm just gonna. I, I'm, it's it's, it's oh, both shit. of us. That's why we're really bad. Yeah. <laughs> we should not. Yeah, we should I, just let I'm Jeff like the do the interview. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So I'm gonna just give you about like six, seven words. You just give me a little word association with it. I'm gonna give you the word. You. That's like the first thing that problem. comes to my mind when I hear the word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. the Poly okay. D uh, oh, costume. Is fucking. Yo, the Poly D. Yes. Shout out to Poly D. Oh, D got right. we'll, we'll start with Harlem. Oh shit, Harlem home, home. That's I like home. that. That's where I'm from, yeah. Awesome. Stretching Barbito. Mentors. I like My mentors that. for sure. Carson Daly. Oh, that's right. Were you on? The, weren't you on the Carson yeah, Daly I show? Did, that's I did right. Five se- I did five seasons on the show. I would walk up to Marquis like, "Yo, I'm the guy from TV." Like, I, be like, <laughs> I was be like, "Yo, so, you're not on TV like, right now, son." <laughs> he was like, "Yo, like, you know, like, I, I don't care." Like, well, I would be like, "No," and then uh, I would chase Noah Tepperberg around the club when <laughs> oh, I did God. finally get him with my demo CD. That's and I had my my number and my email yeah. written on it in pen, and I'd be like, "Yo, put me on." And he, he never once called me. It was a promoter who put me on. And shout out to Noah because he changed my life. But it was a promoter who took a chance on me on his birthday, and he got me the gig. That's so, what's up, man. Awesome. Thank you to that promoter. His name was uh, John uh, yeah, Smosho. David, 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 David Cohen. David Cohen. David Cohen. David, David Cohen. Cohen. One time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Juice. Oh shit. Uh. Wow, uh, the, the 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 bug or the fever that that in, that infected me and made me want to become a DJ. Like juice is oh. like the essence. I say the essence. Yeah, I love that. If it's, if it's one, I word, think that's the, the first time you see that you saw a DJ on on, on a, a movie. Or B like, Street, you know, nah, Beastie, like, Hollywood. B Street oh, wasn't really yeah. big big Hollywood movie or right, Wild Style. Like nah, yeah, 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 yeah. And like, yo, man. 
I, it, that was 1992. I'm coming up on 30 years in the game. Wow, man, I've only so been in this game say, for 15 yeah. years. The 30 year anniversary <laughs> of Juice is coming up next year, 2022. Really? I'm 30 years. I'm 30 years in this I DJ like that. journey. You know what I'm saying? So I thank, thank you for even mentioning Juice. All right, the next one: head spins and graffiti. Oh shit! Oh shit! My childhood, because that was that was growing up in Harlem. In the 80s, that like it was like, how do I want to participate? Like, how can I get down with hip hop? So you tried everything. Graffiti is where my name came from, Reach. It was my tag, right? Uh, 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 you know, and then and then I my first my first thing that I thought was gonna be my my spaceship, my my passion that was gonna become my career, my life was yeah. was breakdancing. Well, and like amazing. in my neighborhood, <laughs> there was like the dude who's like good at the worm, the dude who's good at the robot, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, like yeah. the windmill dude. And I was like, yo, what's left? So, oh, and I got the fucking fucked up haircut too. Mm-hmm. Like, It'd be perfect for head spin. So I was like, yo, I'm going to be the, you guy the head that spin guy. Head spin. So you were the head spin guy. That's why oh. I always had a fucking crazy haircut because I was like, yo, I need some Christian art. Yeah, time. you don't want to wear a helmet <laughs> when you do it. It just doesn't right. pull it off right. We know helmets don't look right. That was a foul ball if you were the helmet. So we, we, we've talked about this before in our, our podcast. Can you name an album going through the whole album, No Skips? Like every lyric? No, or like every album, song. Like every song is or, or, a jam. Or just something that I can play beginning to end. Play Correct. from beginning to end. Oh, I got a bunch of those, man. I mean, Give me three. Illmatic changed my life. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Illmatic changed my life. Uh, Only built for Cuban links changed my wow. life. Oh, uh, that was I mean, if yep. Want to switch genres? Uh, you know, uh, man, uh, hotter than July. Stevie Wonder. Oof. I mean, uh, shit, man. Like, man, there's a, there's a there's a few, man. We can we can we can really yeah, we, we can really get we, into we it. We need man. a part oh two and God. three on this one. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big big club or small lounge to play. Ooh. Wow, I feel like. I thrive in the big room. I got a big voice. Yeah. I got a big presence. Shout out to Reach. He's he's definitely uh, really great on the mic. Yeah. There's only a so, so slack flu that are really good. And and I re and Reach are two one of my two of my favorites. That's for sure. Yo, the the mic literally saved my career. Because oh. I'll be honest, I'll keep it real, and I'm never gonna front. I'll never ever front. I'm not the greatest technical dj i am i I also i also agree that i am not the most technical dj ever i know that i already know that myself so it's okay to admit it and i love that you're admitting it like yeah and and i'm 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 gonna go one step further and say this um when coming into those that carson daly and those gigs in that early 2000s like where my career really broke out going into that era the the under the tutelage you know the, like unofficially because it wasn't like stretch and bob were like yo this is do this do that they, they weren't like giving me like you know here's your here's your homework like sensei like no you know the, the, not, yeah. the, like you know, you know it wasn't like that karate kid type shit mr miyagi shit but i was just watching them because i was so fortunate to intern for stretch and and, and, and like work out of his apartment initially which is crazy because he was a god to me from yeah, radio of so like legend but like yeah, so 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 the thing was in that, and coming from the elements of hip hop, you know, if you were gonna be a break dancer or a graffiti or a graffiti artist, especially, you really had to like learn your craft. You really had to come with your own style. You really had to be original. You had to fucking work. You had to put to to get respect. You had to be dope. Right? It's not like today where you could get respect and even Drake speaks on it. Like it's 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 it's. it's clout not yeah, it's not yeah. fame right. it's clout. clout yeah it's not fame because fame is like oh my god i have like in, in one interpretation of fame is i have so much respect for you and you're so polarized because of what you do or who you are exactly. that here you're getting all the attention clout is like you just have the eyeballs on you just have you know you you got you got you, you know you, people you are paying people attention, attention but not for yeah. a specific it doesn't have to be legendary reason yeah like, yeah yeah so I'll just say this. I was all about my cuts, my blends, original flair and flavor in any possible way before I got to Marquee, Tao, Carson Daly. Okay. When I got there and I realized, oh, shit. 
30, 40, 40% skills got me here. Maybe 50% skills got me here. No, I want to say like 45% or 40% uh-huh. skills got me here. 60% personality personality every day yeah you can't duplicate that so once i once i realized i literally said i'm gonna i'm gonna invest more in this because this is my x factor in my personal case in my personal case so i literally made a decision it's gonna sound sad and i probably like the the, i belong in the dj fucking prison and purgatory (laughs) like never kick me off the dj island i haven't had turntables set up in my crib since carson daly wow I haven't had turntables set up in my crib. That's crazy. I haven't had a. I haven't had a session. I mean, I've had sessions. I've had sessions. I just used mine I'm yesterday, like, bro. And, and like, I, but I'm like, it's coming full circle. And I, it's funny that you, it's all based off the big room, small room yeah. uh, question, which is an amazing question because now is the first time I'm like, yo, I want to get turntables set up back in my crib. It feels. I want to get back to the essence. And I'll tell you why. It's because, in my opinion, small rooms in New York, yeah, small rooms are back. I like that. They big are. Rooms, yeah, yeah, hundred well, percent. Room, big, big rooms in New York. Only speaking for New York, it, and because I, I can't speak for anything else right now. Yep. But big rooms are are they're facing a big challenge. They're struggling to figure out how to stay packed. And it, it, your name. It's similar, like what happens to artists, like. Your name, the mark, you know, I don't know if an example, just throwing a name out of a hat, a marquee or a big club, you know, they're just losing their identity. Out. They have no identity it, to them. And, the and, smaller and have, rooms yes. have sometimes you walk in a small room and the room itself is what makes that room beautiful. In that the DJ yes. sometimes just ex, is, is an extent, you know, extension and, of that. You know what I mean? I agree. Yes. And think about the customer of today, the kid who's 21, who's like, your, 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 your club is, is, is trying to court that 21 year old and get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 good years of, 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 of a customer of, of, of patronage yeah. out of that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That that's guy it. Or girl, you're trying to, you're trying to get him at 21 yep. and keep him spending with you right. all his birthdays till 30. And then he says, I, I'm my club year is done. That's like the goal. 10 year, yeah. you got 10 year span for sure. Yeah. All right. And now to get, to get that kid though, it's a lot harder to get that kid because that kid now he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not as invested in the historic name of the club. No, he's not at more all. He, invested in my, where am I going to go where my experience tonight is going to make me feel something and make my Instagram and my social media look, look pop, pop, tonight. It, it changed tonight. everything. Social it media changed it all. I was nope. at the legendary such and such. So, nope. So right. in that way, I think it's changed. Yeah. For sure. All right. Last, last. Small rooms are back. <laughs> I like Hell that. Yeah. Last thing we got. So we've kept you too long. We need a part two and a part three. Last thing oh, you shit. need, we need a quick, we always have story time on this podcast. Give us a quick one celebrity story. You can admit the name. Quick one. Oh, something shit. crazy that we, uh, that we've never heard oh, before. Shit. Omit the name too. Um, if you want. Oh, you can say the name. Oh right. my God. Um, okay. Uh, can I, oh shit. Can I tell this? Um, yeah, you can admit the name. Okay. I get, I get, I'm going to jump out the window. And uh, he's trending right now. And he's, and he's, is this, is this, a, is this a Ron Browse story? Ron Browse story. Is it a Ron Browse story? Jumping out the window. Oh, we're gonna get cut off YouTube for singing. Is that what's gonna happen? On the same block. Yeah. Ron and I, wow. Literally, crazy. my next my next door neighbor. Shout out to my house. So this is crazy. Um. So I'm in Vegas all the time or whatever, and I I make friends with Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush is dating Kim Kardashian. Reggie's dating Kim. They're together. I remember uh, this. I remember when, yeah, like, you were like, the, I remember this time period with you. Go ahead. Yeah. It's amazing. I'm seeing him. Like, I'm seeing. I'm yeah. seeing Kim all the time. I'm, I, I end up it, it, go back to Arizona. Her sister. I'm pretty sure Courtney went to college at ASU or U of A. I can't remember which one. So she knew all my people. So we ended up. Uh, and Scott Disick was my homie from. I don't know if people know this. Scott Disick used to do the door and was a doorman at a club called Lobby, wow. owned by my boy Jeremy Casilli, who <clears throat> his his That's manager, crazy. his GM was Mark Birnbaum, who became the owner of Catch and you know Catch. Group, yeah, yeah. So 
So the doorman for, for Mark Birnbaum and Jeremy was a young kid from Long Island named Scott Disson. That's crazy. So He's from Rhode Island? I see Scott from Long Island. Yeah. Long, Long Island. Island. Long Island. Long Island. So, so, so I see Scott. So I see Scott and I see Courtney at a wedding. I'm DJing for some Arizona kids. And she's like, oh, shit, you're the same guy from, from Vegas. I said, yeah, I know your sister, blah, blah, blah. So she's dating Reggie, boom, boom, boom. I'm seeing them every couple of weeks. They're coming out to Vegas, partying. Um, and, and, and Kanye, this is where it's going to get crazy. Kanye at the time is dating Amber Rose. Um, this is, so New Year's, so the, the, the Taylor Swift thing had happened at the MTV Awards right. previously a couple months earlier. And Kanye is like, his career is hanging by a thread. Jay Z's not might not have been taking his phone calls. Is the rumor? Um, nobody wants to touch him. He's getting death threats. He's in a crazy place. He doesn't know, you know, right. what's going on. He's like, man, he went from the hottest guy to like, yo, America's. You're about to get canceled before canceled was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's in a bad place, um, and he's he's trying to move on from that. Somehow, I don't want to say, but. Kim catches his eye. They had had a couple of interactions, I think, previously. I'll just say that uh, from 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 you know, uh, and, and 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 he decided that he wanted to spend New Year's Eve wherever she was at. I'm pretty sure Kim was booked to host at Tao, Las Vegas. Me being one of the main guys at Tao at the yeah, time, yeah. I get a phone call. From friends of mine, I won't name them, the people who are close to Kanye. And they're like, yo, Ye wants to DJ in Vegas. <laughs> wait, I said, wait, what? Uh, yeah, DJ? Yeah, yeah. They're like, Ye has been, met, you know, twiddling around with DJ, and he knows that nobody can afford his his hosting price yeah. to do, like, a concert or songs or, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. book him and he'll do five songs. Nobody's going to be able to, and this is literally, like, five days or four days before New Year's. So I get a call and they're like, find him a gig and he'll owe you one. And I'm like, shit, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> I jump on the phone so fast, but I'm thinking to myself like, but what is he, what, you know, what, why is he, why is he like, why is this last minute like rush to go out there? And he's Kanye West, he's a multimillionaire, he can just get on a plane and go out there. Yeah, it's yeah, happening. yeah. So, Kanye wanted to have a, a, a booking to justify, so it didn't look like he was going just to like pursue See, somebody. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. It was like I want this gig to look organically like I just I'm here for work. Yeah, yeah. And then oh, I just and, oh, and, oh, so just funny. Bumped, it's so so funny you're here. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm making calls. I call the Palms. I call. I call. I call Tao. I said, Yo, can we? What about, can we add him on the lineup at, at Tao? Can we add him on the lineup at, 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 at Marquee? I'm calling everybody I can. Everybody's like, yo, people are considering it, but they're like, yo, he still wants, he still wanted, I think, 100 Gs. Wow. <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, DJ yeah, set. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. DJ set. Yeah. It was like 100 Gs. So people are like, yo, the crunching numbers, trying to make it happen, but they're like, yo, we, we just can't. We, I'm getting budgets no after budgets after are after at that point already, yeah. already taken care of. Yeah, for sure. Totally, because literally five days before New Year's. Yeah. Uh, Richie, of course, being the, the the nightlife legend that he is, and the the king of of celebrity wrangling, and and with you know one somebody Richie Akiva from One Oak, who yeah. has some of the best relationships with celebrities in the business for sure. Know, yeah, in the business ever, he makes it happen. Wow. He says, of course, he does. Bring Kanye. He makes it happen. Right. I end up not even being involved in the financials of the deal. He didn't need me to get to Kanye. So they they work out a deal. Yeah. On that New Year's, that's when they linked up. And that's when the whole Kim Kanye Ye happened. Kim thing started. Wow. It started with a DJ set. <laughs> that's it crazy. It started that with a DJ amazing. set. And my only involvement, I'll say, is just that I got the call like, yo, get him out there, find a way to make it happen. That's amazing. 
Oh. That's the, as many. That's as many details as I can oh, say. Oh man, the, that's amazing. More, it's, yeah, all that's like it's all your fault. It's all your fault. I've never told that story ever. So it's all wow. your fault. First time we're hearing that story. Reach one time. We can't thank you enough for uh, for today. Yo, uh, it's guys, amazing, man. amazing. My uh, brother, my we brother, man. You guys, soon, man. Yeah. That, yo, you guys are doing something so great for the culture, for the music, for the craft. Please, like. Keep doing what you're doing, and Thank like you, you know, it, our, our our whole legacy as DJs and lovers of hip hop and all the music, like. Yo, man, like you, you are, you're helping to push all that forward, and and I want to give Appreciate you your flowers and thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, it's a blessing. You're the, man. Realest, you're the blessing, best. Blessing. Thank, thank you, so thank you so much, you, Reece. DJ Reece. Yeah, one time, Reach, y'all. You guys, man. Yo, you, man. I'll see you soon, brother. Thank you so much, yes, man. Love, man. Peace, bro. Blessing. Peace. An amazing interview, Reach. Unbelievable. You're so funny. You're like another amazing. All our interviews are amazing, bro. True. Very factual. Well, thanks Yo, again, again, DJ Reach. That thank you awesome. again for taking your time out, man. It's love. Thank you for what you've brought to the culture and, and all the knowledge that you have. And we definitely have to have Reach on here again one time. Part for two. Sure. Part two for sure. Because that shit was really good, that man. That was awesome. So thank you, Reach. Thank you guys for tuning in. You can catch me at Jason Smith Music on IG. You can catch me at Jeff London underscore on IG. And you can catch us at I'm the Promoter. He's the DJ. Yes, sir. Let's do it.